Here we have several pigs showing old Polish farmhouses. The small cutaway house I'll build will combine a couple of the elements you can see here. Except for the last pig, these don't show log houses. Wooden planks were used to build these houses. These shutters aren't too complicated and all I have to do next to building them is to decide how to paint them. I tend to painting them brown and white like on this picture. I wish I could do some of the beautiful carving as it's shown on the beam at the corner. Here's what I want to do with the roof. It'll be a stepped or layered thatch roof. I'll use ceiling hemp for the straw on the roof. Depending on the space I have on the dial, there'll also be a small garden like this one. As usual, the materials I used are cheap. Many of you will have them around the house. Those I bought can be replaced with cheaper stuff. I bought 18 pieces of different veneer and a bundle of balsa wood, but you can also use McDonald's coffee stirrers. You'll have to send them thinner for the door and window frames, but at least the wood wouldn't cost you anything. I used foam border space for the walls. I keep all packaging foam that comes along with stuff I and my neighbors buy. In this case I used a 9mm foam board. I cut a 1.5mm balsa board into 5mm wide strips. These long matches were used as roof beams. They cost next to nothing and they make wonderful beams with a really nice texture. At that moment I wasn't sure if I should use natural or yellowish colored ceiling hemp. Cardboard was used for covering the walls from the inside. It was also used as base for the roof and the building itself. I sanded the plank's edges at a slight angle to enhance the visibility of the demarcation between them. The positions for window and door were marked on the foam board. I cut out the window after I had glued five layers of planks onto the foam board. The door was cut out after I had glued six more layers of planks into place. I wanted to give the foam enough stability before cutting out the openings, especially around the door. The long board on top of window and door needed cutaways to fit precisely. They'll be covered with frames. The middle section is slightly tilted. Well, here you can see that the Polish carpenters used planks they had handy. I decided that my job was good enough. The wood grain was enhanced with a brass wire brush. The right vertical edge will be cut to an angle, so I left a bit of excess foam board uncovered. As I said before, the inner walls were covered with cardboard. Since the house's interior won't be visible, I painted black. This part of the wall was built first. The window was cut out and the left edge was marked. As with the wall before, I left a little excess for the angle. That wouldn't have been necessary because this wall would be narrower on the inside than on the outside. And here's the reason why this wall had to be built in two sections. The foam board is 9mm thick plus 1.5mm for the balsa planks. The beam in the corner is only 7 by 7 mm Some cutouts had to be made for a proper alignment of both walls at this corner. Then the balsa planks were cut to length and glued into place as well as the beam. Here you can see the slight angles on the right hand side of the front wall and the left hand side of the gable end. And now for the gable. According to the reference pick it has an angle of 45 degrees. The left hand side received the same angle as the lower wall section. I used toothpicks as dowels for the assembly of both wall sections. The planking was done the way you saw on the pick of the actual farmhouse. This piece of cardboard was glued to the inner side of the gable end.
This seems to be a specific feature of Polish farmhouses. I had no choice but building it. In my opinion, roof and canopy were the most difficult parts to build. I decided that the distance between wall and lower edges of roof and canopy would be 15 mm. The easiest way to build it was to start with a template from cardboard. Some basic calculating was necessary for the correct measures. Using the template made measuring and cutting the veneer parts very simple. The left edge received the same angle as the gable end for a proper alignment with the diode base. At least I thought so. The underside received beams made from long matches and balsa strips. Some dry fitting. I like the way it looked. The outside of the beams didn't fit precisely enough, but all I had to do was some sanding. Then I noticed that the left side didn't have the correct angle, so I changed it. After that, everything was fine. I added a strip to the upper side. That was necessary for the layered thatch. I started with the frames for the frames. Strips of different width and lengths were cut and the narrow edges were centered to 45 degrees. The actual window frames were glued between the wider boards. Here's some dry fitting with the two side and the top frame. Not too bad. I don't know how often I looked at this pick, but obviously I didn't do it often enough, or else I would have noticed that the windows sit flush with the wall. I had to remove the window frames I had built. I really love unnecessary work. Then I built the outer covers for the frame. They consist of a white board with a narrow one on top. Here I forgot to remove a bit of the incorrect frame. I took care of it a little later. Next thing to do was building the windowsill. I used a brand new number 11 blade to cut it into shape. Another view of the part I had to clean up. A couple of pigs of the windowsill. This gap was filled with a smaller bar that is part of the sill. After everything had cured, I started my second attempt on building the window frames. That was much better. I try to build them to look as close to the actual windows as possible. At last, that bit was removed. And then it was time to build the second window. I try to avoid the mistakes I had made with the first one. Both windows aren't perfect, but I hope it won't be too visible after the paint job. Then I built the door frame. 
The threshold was made from a piece of 2x2mm wooden beam, a 5x0.5mm strip of wood and a piece of veneer. The right vertical part of the frame is slightly bent, so I had to shape the threshold accordingly. As I said before, the inside of the house won't be visible, so there was no need for extra fine work. The door was made from a piece of 1.5mm balsa and strips of veneer. The veneer was a bit too thick, so I sanded it thinner. The door fits nicely. Of course the door needed a handle and a keyhole. I used a small piece of 0.4mm styrene for the plate. I drilled 0.6mm holes for the handle and the larger opening of the keyhole and a 0.3mm hole for the smaller bit. I used the hobby knife to remove the styrene between these two holes. Door and window handles were made from 0.6mm copper wire. The end of the door handle was squeezed flat with a pair of pliers. And then I bent the door handle the wrong way. I corrected that and glued the handle into place. Then the window handles were glued into place too. Then I built the shutters. I cut off four matching pieces of veneer. I needed many 1mm wide strips. They were glued into place according to the pick of the actual shutters. Then I cut pieces of veneer for the open areas. Here you see what it looks like. Some test fitting with the front wall. As with the door, the veneer was too thick and had to be sanded thinner. The final result. I'm happy with it. I could as well call them walls, but the main purpose is to carry the roof. I made them from 9mm foam board. They received the matching angles to fit into the right rear corner of the diode base. A small area of the inner wall will be visible because the door will be half open. I added some boards to the wall as they can be seen in many old farmhouses. A piece of cardboard finished the job. Uh, well, of course it has to be painted.
All open areas of the supports are covered with cardboard to give them more stability. For the base I want to use one of these resin pieces. I worked with a local archaeological museum before I was retired and I was allowed to take these home. The parts are very thick and the molds were worn so there'd be a lot of sanding involved. For that purpose I glued new wet sanding paper onto my sanding board. I haven't decided yet but I tend to using this piece. You saw this pick before. This is what I want to do with the roof. The roof will be low at the right rear corner because it will be placed on the dio at a slight angle. I laminated the cardboard and beach veneer. I cut off all visible parts of the roof's underside. Then I cut them into strips, scrub them with a wire brush and glued them back into place. Here you can see the difference between before and after scrubbing. Then I realized that the roof's front edge needed extensions. I had made a wrong measurement. I added the roof beams and glued the veneer strips into place. The long side received a narrow strip to make this edge thicker. I'll glue a vertical bar to it. Then I glued a couple of strips to the upper side of the roof. As with the canopy or awning, they are necessary for the thatch. After that I glued contact areas for the cover to the roof's rear edge. Locators for the roof were glued onto the upper edge of the front wall. The same was done to the underside of the roof. Along with the roof beams, I glued strips of veneer into place. They serve as locators too. And then I started thatching. That's a lot of work and I'll finish this step for the next video.
At least the canopy was finished. It'll receive a clear coat prior to a wash and some dry brushing. And now for a couple of pics that show what the finished farmhouse will look like. The window and door frames were primed. They'll be painted white and they needed a good base for that. The next time you see it, the rear will be covered. Hope you like it, and that's it for now.